Hello. In this video, we are going to be finding the derivative of the curve y is equal to the arctangent of x, and that's represented by this graph over here. So we're looking for, what is our dy dx? Now this isn't a function, pretty clearly. It doesn't pass the vertical line test anywhere. So we are going to use implicit, implicit, differentiation, yay. And that means that what we're doing is we're taking the derivative of both sides of this equation. Uh, except we can't exactly do that yet because we don't know what the derivative of the arctangent of x is. So I'm going to redefine this and say that, uh, that tangent y is equal to x. These are equivalent expressions since arctangent uh, is an inverse function sort of if you you know if you're familiar with tr your, your trigonometry you'll know that there are some issues with the arctangent um, function being or any of the arc trig functions uh, being formal exactly um, but that that's not really relevant here exactly at least not right now so the tangent of y is equal to x we're going to be taking the derivative of both sides the derivative with respect to x of tangent y is equal to the derivative with respect to x of x. All right, we can simplify that pretty quickly. The derivative with respect to x is equal to one. The derivative with respect to x of tangent of y, it's a tiny bit harder. Uh, so that means we have to take the derivative of this outside function, tangent of x, which is secant squared of x, but plug in y, so we have secant squared of y, times, this is just a chain rule, the derivative of our inner function, sort of, it's not, again, I can't call it a function exactly, but uh, as I read somewhere, they, they said that it was symbolic of a function, and I thought that was kind of funny. Um, the point is that the chain rule can work with these expressions even when they're not formally defined functions, um, and that's going to be the derivative of y with respect to x. All right, so now we can simply say the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to one over the secant squared of y. Now, I'm just gonna simplify this because why not? The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the cosine squared of y. Or you can say one over the secant squared of y. This is the one we're actually gonna work with just because that's what I've seen done mostly, uh, but this is worth noting. All right, so now I'm gonna define a parameter and in the next video, I'm gonna get into why these parameters when we're doing this process, like in this video and the last two videos are important, uh, but also on why we don't exactly have to define a parameter here. I'm just gonna do it for tradition's sake. We're gonna choose this parameter because our y is a function of x inside of this parameter. From, it, it looks like we have negative pi over two to pi over two as our range. So given, I'm gonna say given, and we have y is greater than or equal to negative pi over two and is less than or equal to pi over two, we're going to just plug in y is equal to arctangent of x uh, to what we have here. Because we're gonna get this derivative in terms of x for that inside area. And actually, as you'll notice, at any given point here, it kinda looks like it's mirrored at all of the other points with that x value. So while it is, you, you do tend to define a specific function before doing what I'm about to do, it isn't totally necessary. But again, I'm gonna go into that in the next video. So given that y is between negative pi over two and pi over two, we're just gonna plug in our function of y to what we have um, as our derivative currently. We have that dy dx, now I'm using kind of a darker orange, is one over the secant squared of 
the arc tangent of x, right? We just plugged in y. And now I'm going to draw a little picture. And it's these pictures that are kind of important and what make the parameters necessary uh, because they're how we figure out the problem, but they require the parameters to sort of make sense. Um, we have this with this triangle here, and we're taking the secant of some angle, I'm going to call this theta. And theta, the tangent of theta is x. So the arc tangent of x is theta, right? You see what I did there? So that would mean that we have some opposite side and adjacent side where the ratio between the opposite side and the adjacent side is equal to x. Or we could just have a triangle that looks like this, that has one side x and one side 1. We, you know, we could have 2x and 2, but there's really no point in that. We're just going to have some triangle because this is just to help us figure out the ratios. It doesn't matter exactly what lengths the triangle has as long as the ratios are like this. We just have x, 1, and then what is this going to be? This is going to be the square root of 1 plus x squared. So now we need the secant squared. So we need 1 over the cosine squared of that angle, theta. Well, what's the cosine? The cosine of theta, cosine theta, is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. So 1 over the cosine squared, so then 1 over the cosine squared of theta is going to be 1 over 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared squared and that's going to be equal to the square root of 1 plus x squared right because we have to square that first that oh yeah I, I messed up there we just get 1 plus x squared because the square root is removed by this square here, this 2 here. And then we flip it because uh, we're dividing by 1 over uh, 1 plus x squared. And we just get 1 plus x squared, which, which is what we are looking for. This, this one value here is equivalent to the denominator on here. So we end up getting that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 1 over over our value that we got, 1 plus x squared. And that's pretty much it. We have that given that y is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, dy dx is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. And I'm going to go into the parameters in the next video because I think I've had some issues explaining it the best uh, in the next video. I'm going to look at all the triangles and explain why the parameters are necessary for the other functions and why it's not exactly necessary for this function. In any case, we are saying that the derivative of our curve uh, for now between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Thanks for watching.